Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Ellison for Catholic News Break. Here's what's happening this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. The Pope is getting some much needed rest and relaxation after his packed trip to Germany, but he will be back to work very soon. Catholic News Service's Carol Glatz has more on the Pope's week ahead. Pope Benedict is taking it easy after an event-packed four-day visit to his native Germany. The Pope usually has a very light schedule before and after these quite intense foreign trips. Pope Benedict is also finishing up the rest of his working vacation out at the Papal Summer Villa in Castel Gandolfo. The Papal schedule over the summer gets pared down to the essentials, like meetings with bishops, heads of state, and top Vatican officials. The lighter schedule also gives the Pope time to make some headway on writing his third book in his series on Jesus of Nazareth. The Pope will return briefly to the Vatican on Wednesday for the weekly general audience, and while no precise date has been set, the Pope is expected to leave summer behind and return definitively back to the Vatican at the end of the week. Looking now at news from around the country, the question of where the line lies between a church school's religious independence and the legal rights of its teachers comes before the Supreme Court October 5th. The case could have broad implications for other religious groups as well. Cheryl Perrick was an elementary school teacher at an evangelical Lutheran church in Michigan. She taught standard fourth grade curriculum in some religion classes and was occasionally responsible for chapel services. In 2004, she became ill with narcolepsy. When she prepared to return from disability leave more than six months later, the school asked her to resign, citing concerns about her readiness to work and the contract it had with her replacement teacher. She threatened to sue under the Americans with Disabilities Act and the school fired her. She then filed a case with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, charging that she was fired for threatening to sue. But the school says that because Perrick had the status of called teacher, a designation the Evangelical Lutheran Church gives those involved in religious instruction, the Disabilities Act is not applicable in her case, and the EEOC has no jurisdiction. Well, we head back to the Vatican now. The Pope has just completed his trip to Germany and is already preparing for his trip to Benin in November. There, he'll address African bishops. Rome Reports has more on the Pope's future travel plans. Even though the Pope just got back from his four-day trip to Germany, his eyes are already set on his next international trip to Africa. From November 18th to the 20th, the Pope will visit the country of Benin to meet with African bishops. Two years ago, their synod took place. So during his visit, the Pope plans to deliver the post-synodal exhortation to the group, which they'll use as a guide in the coming years. During his visit, the Pope will celebrate the 150th anniversary of Benin's evangelization. He'll also honor the life and work of local cardinal Bernardin Ganton, who served as a dean of the College of Cardinals for much of John Paul II's pontificate. Looking at other news now from around the country, the Diocese of Phoenix will soon implement new local norms for the distribution of Holy Communion. The wine that becomes Jesus' blood at consecration will not be offered at every Sunday Mass, but rather only at special occasions. According to diocesan officials, the change will bring local Catholic celebration of the Eucharist into union with the practice of the faithful around the world, where it is uncommon to receive communion in both species. Father Kieran Kleksuski, executive director of the Phoenix Diocesan Office of Worship, said that in poor countries, churches do not have the resources to offer the chalice to the laity at every Mass. He said the universal church is what is considered in making universal norms. After the Second Vatican Council, the U.S., U.K., and Oceania received experimental permission to offer the cup to the faithful. The 1975 Missal, the one currently used, allows for 14 times when the cup can be offered to the laity. Now, with the new missile going into effect in the U.S. in November, new norms will be put into place. The new norms do give the local bishop leeway in application. And finally in the news, Dominican sister Gabriella Williams is this year's winner of Catholic Extension's Lumen Christi Award. Sister Gabby, as she is known, received the award at a reception following a Mass at Our Lady of Perpetual Help church in Indio, California. She was recognized for her work with migrant and immigrant workers in the lower desert in the Diocese of San Bernardino, California. Uh, Sister Gabby sees her mission as fulfilling part of God's plan of love for all of humanity. The award is in its 34th year and it's meant to recognize the achievements of those who have sought to be like Christ in serving the poorest in their under-resourced diocese. 
The Chicago-based Catholic Church Extension Society is a supporter of various ministries in the nation's 86 mission dioceses. As the Lumen Christi winner, Sister Gabby received a grant of $25,000 for her ministry, and the diocese also receives $25,000. And that is all the information we have for you this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.